Boom. I almost turned him back on myself. Yes. Wing overs. Look at those sweet wing overs. So I've started flying paragliders three or four years ago and there's a few things that as a newbie it was a bit difficult to get my head around and really understand how they work. Uh, for instance, how to core a thermal, how to find a center, so if you, you're flying and you find some lift, how do you know where to go and what to do? And also other things that might feel a bit counterintuitive at first, like if you're flying against a very strong headwind, you should put a lot of speed bar on so you actually get some forward ground speed uh, rather than just sitting in the same place and sinking out. So let's take the example of finding the center of a thermal. So thermals are columns of rising air. You'll have the ground, the sun. The sun will heat a part of the ground more than other parts around it because of its position or color and an invisible column of rising air forms and usually when you get to the top a little cloud forms on top of that. And if you're a paraglider you'll be flying around here. The idea is to go into a thermal, stay in it without rising air and when you get to the top continue on your journey. So the problem is if you find them how do you manage to stay in them? So let's look at this problem top down. Generally speaking, uh, thermals are stronger in the center and then get weaker towards the edges. So our paraglider is basically just a glider. So it's always going down. So something like all of these things are in meters per second. So we'll have something like minus one. And let's say this is a weak thermal. So this will be plus one, plus two, and plus three. So if we're anywhere around here, we're going down. Here we're going up a little bit, and here we're going up more and more. So when you're flying around, you'll have a vario that will tell you if you're going up or going down. So you know at all times what is happening. Is it minus one? Is it plus one, plus three, minus four? So you know at all times uh, if you're going up or going down, but you don't know where the thermals are. All you know is you looked at that number. So if you read some books about this problem, you'll come across this simple rule. So it assumes two things. It assumes that you're coming across and you bump into a thermal, and it also assumes that you're always turning, okay, with a, some radius. So if you have those two assumptions, there's two things that you can do. If your vario is going up, i.e. if this number is increasing, so minus one, zero, one, that's increasing, you widen the turn. So if you're turning with a certain radius, you make that radius bigger. So more radius. If your vario is going down, you tighten the turn, which means you make that radius smaller. It kind of seems like a bit weird. So let's try it out. Bear in mind, we don't know where this is. We can't see this. Uh, all we know is our vario. So, so let's imagine we're coming here with our paraglider. Doop, 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 doop. And here we bump into plus one and our vario starts to go peep, 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 peep. So we know that we're hitting lift. So as per that rule, if the vario is going up, widen the turn. We're already going straight, so we can't get any wider than that. So we continue going straight. And now we're hitting plus two, so it's going up even more. So it's beep, 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 beep. According to the rule, widen the turn. So we can't go any wider, so we keep going straight. 
So we carry on until something else happens, which is we get to here. When we get to here, it starts going down. So it goes from plus two to plus one. So it's going do 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 do. So at this point, we need to, if it's going down, tighten the turn. So obviously we have two options. We could go right or we could go left. For argument's sake, let's say we go left. So we start turning here, turning tighter. And as we go past here, it actually goes from plus one to minus one. So it gets even worse. So according to the rule, if it's going down, tighten the turn. So we tighten the turn even more and we keep turning and we keep turning and keep turning because we're at this rate until we hit this again. So if we hit this again, we're on plus one again, which means it's going up, which means that we widen the turn. So again, you can go straight or simply make wider turns. And then you hit plus one again, which means it's going up, which means you widen the turn. Again, we can't really widen anymore because we're already going straight. And then you hit plus three, which means it's going up, which means you widen the turn, which means you can't widen anymore because you're already going straight. <laughs> you can start to see a pattern here. So until we get to this point, and now we're going down. It's going from minus three, uh, it's going from plus three to plus two. So it's going down, so we tighten the turn. Again, it doesn't really matter. We could turn right here and make it worse, but we already we're already turning to this side. So usually when we go into a thermal, we always turn in the same direction. We don't switch around too much. So we continue to go left and we, because it's going down, we tighten the turn and this turn tightens and we get a little bit of this, a, a little bit of plus one, which means it's going down even more, which means we tighten even more and we see ourselves coming back to plus two. So if we're going to plus two, it's gone from plus one to plus two, which means it's going up, which means we widen the turn. So we widen the turn, get on to three, we get to here, we tighten again until we hit three again. And if the thermal is wide enough, we end up basically understanding where it is and we end up there. And then we're going straight up and we are on the most efficient part of the lift. And remember that we don't know that this is here. So our path will look something like this. So you're kind of getting closer, progressively closer and closer to where the center of the thermal is. And that might change over time as well. So, so that's a really good method to finding the core of a thermal, the core of something that you can't see just by looking at this. But again, it's kind of cumbersome. It's hard. It's a, it's a cumbersome rule to explain. It's kind of difficult to visualize and not everyone will get a piece of paper and actually try to work it out themselves. It's a bit of an abstract concept. So some time ago, I had the idea to create a little simulation, which is a really simple screen on a computer that there will be some random thermals here that you can't see. And you have a little paraglider with a certain speed and you can control, you know, you can pull on this brake, you can pull on the right side brake or the left side brake and it will turn right or left. And you basically let the computer do the math for you. So it's kind of like a little game or simulation where you can choose your path and you can have a little vario here. And you can see, you can actually put this to the test and see if it actually works. Uh, it works in real life, so it should work in a simulation. So I've decided to start putting together a little program simulation slash game together. And I didn't get anywhere. And to be honest, I didn't pursue it very much because I knew nothing about it. But then by chance, in conversation with my friend Ricardo, which is a computer programmer that has made many games before, uh, he said, oh, that would be kind of easy for me to do. And I was like, no way. So he's actually made a little prototype and he sent it to me. Let me show you. So here it is. Let's put it to the test. Have two control sides here. So when I press there, it turns right. The further down on here I press, the more it turns. And here we have the control on the other side. If I press on it a lot, it starts to do wing overs. Okay, so let's put our theory to the test. Here we are going straight. Okay, getting some lift. Some more lift. So I keep going straight. More lift. Oh, st 
stabilized. It's coming down, so we need to turn now. Maybe a bit late on the turning. Okay, turn more, turn more, turn more. Oh, it's going up again. Straighten up. Oh, it's stronger than what it was before, so we're we're closer to the core. Still going up. Still going up. Oh, it's coming down, so let's turn. Oh, it's going up again. Going down again. Let's turn. We're on the edge here. We know we can do much better, so let's go back to here. Okay, going up again, so we straighten up. Oh, much better now. And it's going down again, so we do a turn. Completely missed the core there, we should have turned tighter. Should be around here. There we go. It looks like the core isn't very big, so we're better off uh, just widening the turn a little bit when we get towards the center, rather than um, going completely straight, because otherwise we fall off the side. There you go. Without knowing where the thermal is and just using this simple rule, we're pretty much got it centered now and we're going up fast. We're almost at a thousand meters. Haha. <laughs> just nice. Anyway, this proves the point perfectly and it just makes me wonder how uh, what sh what should we do with this? I mean, there's so many possibilities. So that's as far as we got the project right now. I think it's really, really cool. I'm really excited about the things we can do with this. And I have some questions for you guys. Do you think it's interesting? What would you like to see? You know, there's so many possibilities. It could be a computer game. It could be a mobile phone game. It could be not a game at all. It could be uh, kind of like a sandbox where you can play with different things, increase the wind, increase the thermals, have more sync, less sync. So it's more like a learning tool. Game versus learning tool. Um, 2D, 3D, both. You start 2D and then it goes to 3D. Again, what would you like to see? How, how would this be the most... Um, most exciting project it can be. It would be great to hear your thoughts, so just leave it down in the comments. Um, and another thing that I want you to help me with is I've been trying to push Ricardo, my friend, to do videos about how he made this game. Because I would personally really like to know, because I know nothing about games, so it would be really cool to see how he made the paraglider, how he made the physics, how he made the ground, how he made the thermals. So if you're also interested in that kind of stuff, leave it in the comments. And I know that Ricardo is going to read all the comments for this video, so push him there and we'll get to see how we made this game. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you want to see next. Oh, we also thought um, we could make it a multiplayer game online where we could race cross country. You know, we could, I could play with the guys with the US, with people from Europe and all over the place making a, an online game and that's really exciting. So in the downtime, like now, it's been horrible weather for like a month or two, we could be honing in our skills of decision making and strategy and flying around the sky and trying to race other people. Anyway, you can tell I'm getting overly excited. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments and I'll see you next time. Bye.